Hey guys, I'm back for another video and welcome to another redstone tutorial and in this one I'm gonna be showing you guys how to make the ultimate item sorter This is featured in my minecraft survival island. Let's play and it is huge It took a ton of resources to make this thing and I really didn't want to make a tutorial for it because I figured no one would want to build it because of the massive resource requirements but I've gotten so many requests that I decided to do it anyway, so here I am. So the way this machine works is you dump your inventory in this chest up here, and then all of the snow gets filtered out. And I know that sounds weird, but hear me out. So all the snow gets filtered into its own specific chest over there, and then the rest of the items get sent through here, which brings them through an array of item sorters. Each and every row here is a specific item and as you can see in these hoppers you have five snowballs and then two of any item in the game such as all these stones here or netherrack and stone prismarine anything and of course the system also works for items that stack to 16 as you can see items that stack to 16 require one item and four snowballs so before i teach you guys how to build this thing i'm going to show you the resource requirements which are down here on these signs so you're going to need 163 stacks or just over three double chests full of oak logs or any other wood you're going to need 5 stacks of redstone, 42 stacks of iron ingots, 25 stacks of stone, 5 stacks of quartz, 11 stacks of glowstone, which is completely optional by the way, and 37 stacks of any building block. So once you have all of that, then you can make this massive thing. So now that I've showed you the raw materials, let's show you what those raw materials are going to turn into. 2,121 hoppers. 1,194 chest, 525 redstone dust, 262 redstone comparators, 703 glowstone, again, you don't need that if you don't have it, 1,106 trapped chests, 262 redstone repeaters, and 262 redstone torches. So there you go, that's what, this is the end product with all your crafting, so if you need to know what you're making before you build this thing, there you go. That's everything you need. So this is what one module looks like. It is very tall, as you can see, and it gives you plenty of space for your items. For example, this bottom row here has storage for 12 chests. So 12 chests of whatever that item is, for example, cobblestone, it will store in here before it starts building up on top, and then it would just start flowing over into the uh, the back chests over here which basically are for items that cannot be sorted such as tools armor weapons and in this case items that just aren't in the storage like um, anything that's died Anthony and I made the decision not to uh, sort those because there's just so many but of course you can have a modified design and you could extend these hallways out too so you could very well have a whole hallway dedicated to different colors of wool and I won't stop you. So one last thing before we start building, I'd like to show you how these sorting machines work. So let's look at this one little module right here, which is calibrated to store ender chests. So of course what you gotta do is put in your 5 snow, or 4 if you're using something that stacks to 16, and then 2 of your item, unless it stacks to 16, you only put 1 in there in that case, and then what happens is, this redstone comparator will give a signal one block out with that amount of items, but the second you put in another item, for example, if I throw this ender chest into the hopper, then it will very quickly pulse to this redstone line, which activates the repeater, toggling the torch, and then for a brief moment, letting that item flow down. And as you can see, it landed in here, in this hopper, and another one will land in this hopper, and the reason why is because of course the redstone torch is preventing it from going down which means you have a requirement of four of that item to set up the storage so once you have four it will let the item completely down but you will have these four stuck in these chests pretty much infinitely so of course for something like cobblestone it means nothing you just got to spend four cobble to sort cobble but of course the rest of it will come down here so if i throw in five one two three four five then we will get five 
in the chest. And this is what one wall looks like. It's quite intimidating, I know, but if you build it the way I'm about to show you, it will be a lot less intimidating. And basically what you gotta do is just build one of these and then repeat the process. So like reflect it off to this side so that you can have a nice hallway here, maybe fill in some blocks so you got a ceiling and then move over. As you can see, I just started building right off the edge. These things are, um, they're able to go right next to each other when they're reversed like this. Then I had another two walls and then I had a nice corner piece here for some non-stackable items like swords, bows, flint and steel and so on and then you could have another hallway going out this way and you could change what your storage uh looks like you can have three different hallways and then an end piece or no end piece at all maybe a wall of chests it's really up to you because this design is very easy to work with so i think i've shown you enough of how this machine works it's time to show you how to build it so let's start off with a wall right so we're gonna put glowstone we're gonna put a chest some more glowstone and then another chest so then as you can see you can have an item frame right here and another one here signifying what is in that chest and that chest and as you're about to see the best way to build this thing is layer by layer almost like a 3d printer for those of you that know what those are so what you can do ah jeez <laughs> i keep on like switching the chest types here so the reason why you have trap chests and chests is because you're going to have to alternate between them in order to put them right next to each other. So let's start with this bottom row here. So let's build it with the uh, first item sorter in mind. And ironically, the one in the bottom chest actually ends up being up top. So this sorting machine right here, this little module actually controls the bottom chest, which allows it to have 12 chest capacity. Whereas this top one only has like five, I think. But that'd be for something like, say, smooth stone would be the top row because you'd have to smelt it or have silk touch. And then the bottom row would be cobblestone, which you have tons of, most likely. Let's start building this layer specifically, which is the bottom row of chests. So I'm going to go out by 13. Actually, I'm going to go out by 5 just to make it a lot faster. So we're going to put down our trap chest, then our chest, trap chest, and then chest. Okay, and then we put down our hoppers behind them. And then we put another set of trap chests and chests. I'm actually going to start placing them from this side because it's a little easier. So then bing, 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 bing. And then once we have that row of chests, we go up by another row. And then this is when things get very easy. So I'm going to build this first layer here so you can see what we're going to do. Let's get rid of this chest. That's for the other item. So what we're going to do is go up by one chest, hopper, another chest, another hopper, double chest, hopper, another double chest, and then finally a hopper and a third double chest with a hopper facing in like that. So we're going to have to repeat this for however many um modules you have per wall so in my case i gotta build four more so again i'm gonna show you the whole building process because it is definitely in your best benefit to see how this thing is made before you go about building it because this is one hell of a build and if you mess up then that's a lot of wasted resources so yeah all right this is a very simple process once you build that first layer because then you can just copy it and of course i messed up here so you're gonna have to there we go combine those and then we take these trap chests chests trap chests chests one last layer of hoppers one last layer of trap chests and chests. A lot of alternating you're going to have to do when building this thing. And then the last row of hoppers right there. So now let's start building the other piece. So before we get started, I'm actually going to put some glowstone like this to make things a little easier to see. And then we're going to put tr da -da -da. chest, trap chest, chest, trap chest, chest. Then put hoppers like this. A second row of double chests like this so once you have that row you're gonna have to put one more layer of hoppers right here another row of single chests and then you put one last hopper line like that and as you can see they line up and they are exactly four blocks apart one two three four 
So once you've achieved this step, then it's time to work on the redstone, which is actually not that bad once you know what you're doing. And I have to warn you now, it is very common for people to forget to place the redstone torches. So be very vigilant when building this thing. Okay, so what you're going to have to do is make a module that looks something like this. So there we go. Bing. And then we need a redstone repeater. There we go. Bing. And then there you go. So this is one module. So it's a comparator facing out. Redstone, go down a block, and another redstone. And then underneath here, we have a repeater set to two tick delay, going into a block with a redstone torch that goes up to this hopper. So there you go. We have to repeat that for again, however many times you made this module. So here we go. This is very easy because we only went five blocks out for an example. And then we go bing, 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 bing. And it will be a little bit more difficult to do this if you don't have fly enabled. So that's going to be fun. So anyway, this is actually very easy to do. <laughs> really the hardest part is getting the materials for this. Because if you build everything layer by layer like I'm doing, then it's not hard at all. And if you saw just there, I was placing the hoppers facing into the comparators by right clicking while holding shift on these little tiny slivers here on the edge of the comparator. So don't do this. You don't want it to go down into that hopper. You want it to go into the comparator like this. And you can check the whole row just by looking at them. So these are in opposite directions. You got this lower area that goes this way and then the upper one which goes this way. So now we got to repeat the process for down below. So let's just go two blocks out. Actually, let's not go by that much out because we want to see what we're doing. You'll see. There we go. And then we put another torch there. Repeater with one or two tick delay. Two redstone comparator and a hopper. So there you go. And now we just got to do that a couple more times. And the order in which you build everything is very important because then you get in situations like this where you can't get to the spot where you want to place your blocks or redstone. In this situation with the redstone torches, the easiest way to fix things is just to break the chests and then kind of walk in there and then place everything and then replace the chests. So, bing, bing, and yes, it does change the direction of them, which does annoy me, but you could always do that from the front. <laughs> so, then you put in your repeaters, your redstone line. Oop, there we go. Ding, 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 ding. And then your last row of comparators, and then again right clicking on that very tiny little box on the edge of the comparator and there we go now all the redstone is complete so imagine this as a completed wall except for one thing which i'm actually going to have to go steal some snow from this example over here to show you what the next step is so once you finally built everything take solace in the fact that you're done building for now like imagine that this is like not only do you have this one wall done but you also want to have the wall across from it. Again, the arrangement of the walls is your choice. So, yeah. Again, looking at what we did here, we got one wall there, another here, and then a, a reflected one there. Another wall, 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 wall. <laughs> that sounds really weird saying that over and over. But, yeah. So, you can arrange the walls in any way, but I would definitely recommend once you get to this stage with the snow that you have the whole thing built like every hallway because you want to do all these steps at once because it'll get really confusing later on if you don't because then you won't know which areas have snow which areas have items which areas are incomplete with building or whatever so that's my recommendation build all of these first like the whole wall and then move on to the snow for those of you wondering where you're going to get all that snow all you got to do is simply build a snow farm and to do that you just got to make a little platform for your snow golem make sure you're not in a desert biome because then they will melt and then all you do is you place your two snow your pumpkin head and then you take a shovel and then you just mine away So once you get to that point, what you're going to want to do is take five snow. So one, two, three, four, five, and then take two of your preferred item, such as ender chests. And then there you go. This module is complete. And the way you can see that is that the comparator is on and powering this redstone. And of course you can test it out, but you know, that'd just be really tedious to test every single one of them out. And there you go. It pulsed. But again, there's those two items that will get stuck. So once we throw the third one in, then we should see it down in one of these chests. There you go. So this top chest here is calibrated for ender chests. And then you could just put an item frame here with an ender chest in it. So that you know that's the ender chest chest. 
So to calibrate the rest of these, you can leave it empty. I uh, just put snow like that and then you could just leave it. So if you don't have all the items on hand, that's fine. But make sure it's filled with something by the time you actually start using the machine. Um, I like to use rotten flesh because it is a very common item. Although you could use cobblestone as well, I guess. So then you could just put two rotten flesh in there just so that items will flow over it when you're actually using the machine because the last thing you want is for some miscellaneous item to fall in here and then automatically calibrate the system for it. Unless you don't feel like doing that, then you could very well do that, but it'd be a very unorganized sorting system, and I'd highly recommend you don't do that. But yeah, so all you gotta do is put in the five snow, or if you have something that only stacks to 16, such as buckets, as you can see here, the way you'd calibrate a bucket uh, sorting thing is that you would take a bucket and then four snow, and then that's it and then this will be able to sort buckets for you. So let's just make sure the rest of these are done. So there you have it. All of these are calibrated and all you have left is one last step, which is very annoying. I'm gonna be honest with you. It is a very annoying process, but it is needed nonetheless. So go over to wherever the end of your system is. So for example, you're gonna need some sort of a chest for items that aren't stored or aren't sorted such as i don't know a sword right you can't sort a sword because they don't stack so your swords would end up in this last chest here along with everything else that does not sort so the way you get all your items in there and complete this thing at the same time is you take some hoppers and you run them like this so one in the chest and then go up a little bit. You can make this much more organized. I'll show you how we did it in our design over there. But then what you do, you start at the end and then slowly loop your way around each hallway such that this line of hoppers you're making goes on top of the line of hoppers with the snow and items in it like this. All right, whoops, I fell. <laughs> and then once you reach the end of a, uh, a floor, then you could go up like this and then lead your line of hoppers over like this. So you want to put it in such a way that when you dump items in here, such as ender chests, there you go. Oh, as you can see there, I forgot to calibrate these. See, look what happens when you forget to put in rotten flesh to unfinished um, units. Because now this is an ender chest chest. Which is fine, because I guess, there you go, we got two ender chest uh, storage areas. So, let's take a test item, such as redstone, I don't know. And we're going to have it down here. Then when we dump the redstone here, it will pass over all of these, because it can't stack with any of these. And yeah, as you can see, the redstone is just flowing in. It flows across all of this over these because it can't go in it down and then down to here or wherever the redstone is yeah and then it starts flowing in as you can see there and then it says there's three of them and of course this thing is constantly on which turns off the torch allowing it to flow down into its respective chest and I do get these mixed up because they're backwards but there you go 60 of the redstone managed to get down there which makes sense because we needed two of it to calibrate it and then two of them get stuck in the chest we can do that again if we want but yeah you're gonna have to do this in such a way that it loops through every single hopper on this middle floor here first goes up and then loops through every single one on the top floor so let me show you that line right here so let's start all the way at our set of dump chests we don't just have one we have a couple overflow chests that kind of make up a wall in this cool design. But then they go up into our line of hoppers, which we kind of concealed off on the side so that they don't make a nuisance. And then it goes and actually make sure, and actually make sure the hoppers are facing towards the end. So you start at the end and make your way to the beginning. So there you go, still concealing this line of hoppers, goes through that wall, then it goes like this over that entire wall. And then it makes its way to the end of the wall, goes out and then goes over this wall. And then it goes back through this line of glass here. So it's got a nice little style to it, I guess. Goes through this line, that hallway, and then it kind of curves, as you can see here, makes it through here goes through that wall, that one, that one, that one, and then that one, and that one. And then over here, it goes up, as you can see right here. And then it does the same thing over every single wall on the top. So that is it for this tutorial, guys. Actually, one thing to note, 
over by your dump chest, it is definitely recommended that you have one extra little unit here for storing snow. Because what happens is, if you don't have the safeguard, then when snow goes down to your system, it will go into the first chest it finds and mess with the stacking mechanics in that unit. will basically suck in any item it sees. So definitely put this before it goes. So basically, it sucks all the snow out before it makes it here. So all the rest of the items will go down here into that hopper line and then go over every single sorting unit until it makes it to the bottom chest there. And all the snow will just get routed directly to the snow chest, which just happens to be over here. Because we did organize our storage, we will... I will fly through here just so you can see how we sorted everything so this is the orientation we did and yes i can confirm that this machine is 100 percent effective you will not find any items in the wrong place you won't find any redstone that breaks but what you might find is a lot of lag so a good way to fix that is to just light up the area as much as you can with torches because the more light there is the less processing it has to do in order to light up the redstone and the surrounding area so that's a quick recommendation but again I'm just gonna fly through here so you can see how everything in here is organized and again we used the placeholder rotten flesh for any slots that we did not fill and this design does go further of course we only went 13 out in these walls but you can definitely go like 20 blocks 30 40 50 out in that direction as long as this line of hoppers just goes over the top set of uh, sorting hoppers here so let's finish up with the food and mob drops hallway as you can see there and here's the dump chests so that's it for this tutorial guys it was definitely a lengthy one for me it took almost an hour to record all of this and i hope it was worth it because this is an awesome machine and i guess everyone deserves to be able to use it if they can get that many resources again 163 stacks of wood so anyway leave a like down below if you enjoyed this tutorial and make sure to go check out my social media for updates on my 2d rpg game and development and my other redstone tutorials and if you actually manage to build it then definitely send some pictures like some screenshots because this thing is ridiculous and anyone that manages to build it i want to see because this thing has not been built anywhere besides in this world and in the survival island world. And that's about it. So I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys later.